The Allegory of the Orchard, Part 2, The Allegory Explained, by Daniel E. Dawes. You've seen our cautionary tale, The Allegory of the Orchard. In a number of ways, these stories drive home the idea that improper planning, resources, care, and attention result in unfavorable outcomes. However, we can also see that proper planning, resources, and care, at the right time and in the right amount, encourage meaningful endeavors to thrive. So, let's review what each part of our allegory means. The farmer, in our storyline, represents the government, which, throughout our lives, impacts the health status of every single one of us, whether through policy, or legal actions, or inactions. This holds true through a complex web of political structures and processes that have been created at the international, national, state, and local levels. The seeds in our story represent us, the people. The soil symbolizes housing, a crucial but underestimated factor affecting health. It's important to keep in mind that, throughout our allegory, each seed is the constant, and the farmer and his soil are the variables. For example, indigenous populations have endured removal to reservations, some of the most brutal parts of our country, and today experience some of the highest health inequities. They, like the beautiful established tree encountered by the farmer when he arrived at the plot of land, were relocated and neglected by the government in pursuit of economic prosperity and security. Similarly, the trees in the poor, rocky soil encompass other disparate groups, including lower socioeconomic status individuals, people with disabilities, and racial and ethnic individuals. Metaphorically, if the farmer was intending to produce his best crop, he should have removed the problematic stones from the rocky soil and brought in additional soil. The depth of each hole, the careless placement of the seeds in the poor and rocky soils, and the environmental conditions of these seeds represent the structural barriers that must be overcome. The farmer should have added additional fertilizer and watered the seeds in the poor soil, the water representing economic or employment opportunities enabled by the government, with the fertilizer symbolizing education and underscoring the inequitable delivery of education by the government. Overall, the key lesson in understanding equitable treatment is simple. The attention given to the needs of the seeds in the poor and rocky soils does not take anything away from the needs of the seeds in the nutrient-rich soil. Providing for the individual needs of these seeds would have given our farmer abundantly more trees, more crops, and vastly more prosperity. Just as his considerations would allow each of his trees to flourish, a healthier and more productive population would lead to significant cost savings for our government and a much stronger democracy. Within our allegory, when strong winds scatter or torrential rain washes the farmer's seeds away, these elements create the barriers that detrimentally affect these seeds. The storm represents the brutal forces that roll in unexpectedly and cut lives short, as do pandemics, violence, and natural disasters, the effects of which can be mitigated or worsened by political systems. The pesticide in our storyline represents healthcare as a preventive measure or treatment for health conditions. It highlights the disproportionate availability and delivery of health services, depending on an individual's zip code. The lack of care that the farmer shows many of his trees during their lifespan represents the government's neglect, which leads to voiceless communities experiencing increased mental health and substance use challenges. The investments that the farmer refused to provide the tree in the poor soil represent the lack of funding for services, or lack of distribution of resources, intended to bolster social and economic opportunities for under-resourced communities. Throughout our allegory, the farmer never conducts a thorough assessment of his orchard to correctly determine the source of his difficulties or to institute meaningful approaches to address the problems. His sick tree was subjected to the experimentation of an arborist, who should have been caring for the farmer's tree, or at least trying to assess the cause of the tree's problems. Sadly, with the farmer's consent, he used the sick yet resilient tree as a specimen to glean valuable information to benefit the orchard's healthier trees. 
The Arborist represents both private individuals and groups that have leveraged the political system to further unscrupulous or profit-driven agendas without regard to the individuals on whom they see fit to experiment. The fungi represent the insidious and lingering effects of structural racism, classism, misogyny, homophobia, ableism, and other treacherous forms of inequity undergirding the political determinants of health. Political determinants of health involve the systematic process of structuring relationships, distributing resources, and administering power, operating simultaneously in ways that mutually reinforce or influence one another to advance or hinder health equity. Overall, when the farmer's experiment throughout the orchard was complete, trees remained only where he had invested time and resources. History is replete with examples of political systems ignoring the voices of justice. Though there are instances in which political determinants have elevated health equity for all groups, they have, on more occasions, hindered the progression and advancement of health equity. As we seed the ground on our continuing journey to health equity, it's important to understand what has caused portions of our common field to become barren. Let's work together to fertilize and protect our collective soil to successfully promote actionable solutions toward true health equity.